you will hear a woman talking to some students about her job. First, in the exam, you will have 20 seconds to look at questions 1 to 4. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Hello everyone. Thank you for inviting me to give a talk in this series of employment lectures. I'm here this evening to tell you about my job. I'm going to tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it and what I hope to do in the future. OK, well... I'm a police officer. I've been in the police for just over five years and part of my job is to give talks to students about police work. People often ask why I joined the police, so maybe I'll start there. I've always been interested in law and order, so I went to study law at university. But... Uh, when I got there, I realised that I was more interested in the practical side of law than the theory. So I applied to work with the police force in my spare time. Then, as soon as I graduated, I was accepted for training. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. As you know, our job is to protect the public from criminals and defend the law. So obviously, the police force has to work every day of the week, day and night. This means we're often at work when everyone else is relaxing with friends and family, and we can't always be around for special occasions like birthdays and New Year's Eve. On top of that, we have a lot of extra work at weekends, especially when there's a football match and the fans are out celebrating. So, our working hours are one disadvantage of police work. A lot of the time we have to work with the public to avoid problems, and we get special training for that. But we can't always prevent trouble. So, another disadvantage of the job is the danger. I mean, we know that some of the people we have to arrest will attack us. Now for the advantages. Well, one of the advantages is that police work is well paid. As I've said, it's a difficult job and police officers work hard for their pay. But there are many more advantages. For example, sometimes the work's fun especially when we have to protect famous people from their own fans. I've met quite a lot of celebrities in my job, and I must say I enjoy seeing them close up and finding out what they're really like as people. But for me, the biggest advantage is the job satisfaction. Speaking for myself, I would say I get the most job satisfaction when I help someone, or solve a problem in a community. And in the future... I'd like to train to be a detective. I think I'd be good at that. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear two students and their tutor discussing a survey project. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16.
Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. So, what's the survey about, Tom? It's about where students want to live and how they choose. Basically, their accommodation preferences. We've actually tried it out with a few students already. OK, that sounds fine. So, to start with, how many questions have you got? Hmm, 20? Is that too many? Yes, it is, really. People get fed up answering lots of questions and they stop thinking about their answers. Right, so we need to think about that again. What do you think of the first three questions? Um, you want to know what affects students' choice of accommodation when they go to university? Yes. We want to find out which has the most effect. The cost, the number of rooms in the house or flat, or the distance from campus. And then we asked another question. Oh, yes. What else did you want to find out? Well, we wondered whether public transport was important. You know, not many students have cars, so it might be quite important for them to be near somewhere where they could catch a bus or train. Yeah, that's a good question. Before you ask any more people, I've got a couple of suggestions for improving the questionnaire. First of all, I think you need to ask fewer questions. As I said, 20 is really too many. I'd cut it down to 10 if I were you. OK, 10 questions only. And is there anything else you think we should do? Well, yes. Some of the questions are actually quite complicated. I think you should make them clearer. I mean, I think they should be easier to understand. And what do you think about asking more questions about cost? No, I don't think you need any more about cost. But you could ask a couple more questions about the reasons for students' decisions. So we should ask some more questions with why? Yes, I think you'd get quite a lot more information if you did that. Thank you. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Um, we've already got some results from our first questionnaire. Do you think we could use them? I don't see why not. What have you found out so far? Well, the number of rooms was only important for 16% of the people we asked. It looks like a lot of students are quite happy to share a room. And even fewer people were concerned about being near a bus stop. Only 10%, in fact. I'm surprised about that. But what about the distance from the university? Well, that was quite important. Around 20% of the students we asked wanted to be close to campus. Hmm, that makes sense. And what about the cost? <laughs> yeah, as we expected, the cost was by far the most important factor. More than half the students were concerned with the cost. 54% to be exact. Only 54%? I thought it would be closer to 80%. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear some students discussing an assignment about zoos. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. How are you doing? Fine. I've just come over to talk about this assignment on the function of zoos. Oh, hello, Charles. Hello, Brenda. That's good. I've just been in the library looking at some stuff. I think Adrian's been on the web. Yes, I have. Well, that's great. What have you found out about zoos? I've been looking into the history both of zoos and of keeping animals generally. I didn't think we had to do that. Yes, it was one of the topics we had to research. We definitely need to cover it, even if only briefly, I think. After all, people have kept animals for recreation and pleasure for centuries. The ancient Egyptians kept collections of animals, and of course the Romans kept animals for recreation. Ah, the Romans. That brings us to the general question of the treatment of animals and the mistreatment of them. Uh, yes, but that's not our topic. We've been told to keep off that. Now, where were we? Our assignment is concerned with the purposes of zoos in general and in our modern era. We have to cover the history, but not in great depth. Our main focus is the scientific aspects of zoos and the work they do for conservation and so on. We mustn't forget the question of who pays for them. Mm. Zoos are hugely expensive places to run nowadays. There are the costs of feeding the animals, obviously, and security for the animals and the public. What happens if they escaped and so on? We have to ask what benefits we get from this. Adrian, I don't think you'll find we have to do that kind of thing at all. But I've been looking into all that and the social benefits of zoos. What I mean is, that's not part of this assignment. All this financial and safety stuff is not necessary. We should stick to their purposes. Now, what have you found out, Charles? Well, I discovered that the World Association of Zoos and Aquariums was very helpful on this. I've got their website address here somewhere. I found out about the scientific research that zoos do. Uh, the other thing we should cover is the educational side of their work. The educational side is pretty obvious. I've got lots of stuff here about this and more references to websites and information. There's also the area of entertainment. What about that? Mm, he's got a point. I think we need to do some more research on that. Fine, but it sounds like we've covered the history and science angles pretty well. I agree. Let's leave those for now and plan some more study on the entertainment stuff. And let's do some more work on the conservation element. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. Oh yes, the Arabian Oryx is a classic case. The what? The Arabian Oryx. It's like a deer, but white. Hmm. That is, it has a white body, but brown legs, and long curved horns. It normally lives in the hot desert in the Arabian Peninsula. Anyway, in the 70s, the population declined, and in 1972, the last wild oryx was shot and it became extinct in the wild. There were a few left in zoos in the United States where there was a captive breeding program. This was so successful that in 1982, a small population was reintroduced into the wild. Hunting of wild animals was made illegal and there are now about 300 in Amman. Oh. Although there was a big problem there, I believe. The population went up to about 450 in the 90s, and then illegal hunting did take place. The population crashed again, and the programs had to be restarted. But that's been successful, and there are now, I believe, as you say, several hundred in the wild. This is all available on the websites that Adrian has noted. There was a similar program in Saudi Arabia, and I think there are hundreds in the desert there now. We can use that as a definite success story. And what have you found out? Yes, what have you come up with? I'm going to the library now. Good. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear a discussion about how to manage time. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The topic for today's discussion is time management. It's very important that you develop effective strategies for managing your time to balance the conflicting demands of time for study, leisure, earning money and job hunting. Here is an exercise which will help you to identify areas in which you might be able to improve your time management. Try to answer the 40 questions as honestly as you can, and then score yourself from 1 to 4 in each area. You have 5 minutes to finish them. OK, please stop and look at the screen. According to your answers, you can find in which area or areas you get the minimum scores, and I can give you some strategies to improve them. I find I get the lowest score in the area of using lists. I don't have the habit of keeping a list. What use does it have? Keeping a to-do list is a useful reminder system to tell you of when you need to do what. Don't try to remember everything in your head. Carry a pen and paper or organizer wherever you go to write down the things you need to do, including appointments and deadlines. Do you think a daily list of tasks is necessary? Yes, it is an excellent way to focus your mind on important objectives. Make sure you update your list daily, crossing off completed tasks and adding new tasks. Urgent or important tasks can be highlighted with an asterisk. I find it difficult to set goals. How do I set myself specific and clearly defined goals? You must make sure that these goals are realistic and achievable. To do this, you first need to examine your present situation and assess what goals are important to you and what action you need to take to achieve your target. I am in the final year and trying to find a job. I can't combine the pressures of intensive study with finding time to apply for jobs. Sometimes you need an alternative route to your goal in case you have to change your plans. For example, taking a relevant postgraduate course if you can't get a job. Whenever the examinations sneak up, I start getting nervous. I don't know how to organize my time to deal with so many subjects. You should have a regular venue for revision, such as the library, where you're free from distractions. Plan out a revision schedule or timetable so you devote enough time to each subject. You can also use past examination papers when revising to familiarize yourself with the sort of questions that might be asked. When revising, take a few minutes break every so often to clear and refresh your mind and allow some time off for complete relaxation. I'm always late for everything. You know, the sort, the, the deadline of papers and seminar reports. Sometimes I cannot make decisions immediately, so I ignore them on purpose. So you fall into the area called procrastination. I think it's important that you manage your fear of doing things you don't want to do and realize that the fear is often far worse than any possible negative results. The best time to do something is usually now. Taking action generates the energy for further action. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.